Welcome on stage, Data Against Data. Pick up your mic and your pointer from here. Thanks a lot again to our esteemed jury members, Andre, Georgia, Mihai, and Silvia. Let's hear out what Alex has to say about digital footprint. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Alex. Uh, the previous startup said that in three years, all conversations will be recorded. That is a very scary thought. So I'm here to tell you that there is my sus. Okay, sorry. So hi again. So uh, I'm here to tell you that there is a big shift coming in the world of uh, personal data. Globally, 83% of people state that data privacy is important to them. They want to start deleting, and especially now that the laws are on the consumer side. But where can they start? Well, this is why we created AgainstData.com. Uh, you sign in with your Gmail account. You discover how many companies have your data and who those companies are. And then you just ask for deletion with just one simple click, time after time after time. And of course, you can also monitor uh, confirmations inside the app. We've already created headlines, and we have 6,000 users to date that sent 28,000 deletion requests and a visit to sign up conversion of 33%. But what happens on the company side? Well, when a company receives a deletion request, it has a legal obligation to assess, delete the data from their systems. And how do they do that now? Well, 82% of the companies search for the data manually in over 130 sub-services on average. This increases risk, increases cost, and over 500 companies are already fined for insufficient fulfillment of data subject rights. So we're also developing a user-friendly automated platform to manage data privacy operations. We build on three key pillars, data mapping and governance, privacy request automation, and consent management. And we're aimed at the SMB's market, which is highly data intensive, but doesn't have the skills and the resources that larger organizations have. We already have signed two POCs with a mobility company and an IoT products manufacturer. Uh, the data protection as a service market is one of the fastest growing sectors projected to reach 30 billion by 2030. And our pricing strategy is to keep the consumer product free and charge a monthly subscription for the companies. Our competition is mostly focused on the US market. We're strongly focused on the EU market. Our team has complementary skills and can execute. Adrian already created three data-driven products for Siemens Energy and Honeywell. Alexis bootstrapped his startup to 80,000 uh, euros in annual recurring revenue, and I've launched products and technologies for uh, many big companies. And we're also very happy that we have some great people in our advisory board. Remco, ex-CTO of FintechOS, and Dani, engineering manager for Microsoft. So together, we're building a user-friendly automated privacy platform. The product that helps individuals discover their digital trails already launched, and the product that helps SMBs manage privacy operations will be launched in the next six months. Thank you. Thanks as well, Alex. No deletion requests for the moment, but let's see question requests from Sylvia. Thanks. Uh, so hi, I understand that on one hand you target customers, and on the other hand businesses. So I, cu I was curious out of those 6,000 uh, users that you have, all of them are custom uh, cons consumers, individuals, or also businesses? Yes, uh, the 6,000 users are mainly on the consumer side. So they're people who wanted to discover who has their data and people who sent deletion requests to different companies. So no business yet? No business yet because we're still working on the product, but we have signed two POCs. Uh, one of them is with a mobility company. They were already fined in this space and still couldn't find the solution that works. And the other one is with an uh, IoT products manufacturer. So they are launching uh, uh, generators so that turn basically diesel into electricity and they have data modules. So they're gathering data from their customers and they want to give the customers control. Because at the end of it, the reason why there's frustration is the, in this space is that no one feels like they have control. The users don't feel like they have control and companies feel that they don't have control over the data in their own systems and this is what we're trying to solve on both sides. And what's your plan to acquire more business uh, customers? Well, um, we basically see which companies are getting the requests 
uh, we also see which companies are able to respond in the 30 days. And when they don't, we know that they need our product. So basically, the consumer part works as uh, a, the growth, go-to-market strategy, and uh, also uh, just gives us lots of useful insights. Thank you, Silvia. Let's hear out from Ihai. Um, good work, Alex. Uh, so my question is, do you have competitors, and what's your unique competitive advantage? Yes, um, it's uh, really interesting because uh, a lot of our uh, competitors, so there are two types. Uh, we have uh, companies that just address the users and some of them monetize that successfully. And we have a lot of companies that were built for enterprise. But in the SMB space, there's only one uh, competitor and they're also doing a platform between users and companies, and they're focusing on the US market, we're focusing on the EU market right now. Thanks. I have a quick question around the, the pricing, if you can walk me through that. I thought it's really interesting that you decided to keep the product free until 2024. Is that for a consumer side or for a business side? I, I didn't quite catch that. Yes. I'm, so, I'm curious uh, about the insights the, behind the that pricing, decision. Yeah, uh, the pricing for the consumer, uh, even though others are monetizing, we're choosing not to because we're basically empowering people with a right that they already have and we don't want to monetize that thing. It's also good for this other side of the business not to monetize that thing. Makes sense. And then when we look at the, the business is all about connecting with all the SaaS platforms. So apparently nowadays, a business has over 130 SaaS services that they're using. All of these SaaS services have personal data. When they receive a request, they need to look in all of them. They're doing that manually, which is crazy. So the pricing model will be based on the number of integrations that each company needs in order to successfully manage internal data privacy. And we we've, we've have this figure now, which is extremely conservative compared to what's going on in the market. Yet another crazy thing is that we have time for some one or two questions. Let's hear out if there are from Andre. So um, can, you, can you just tell us a little bit the backstory for the, for the company? When did you guys start? And is my assumption that you started focusing on consumers right? And why do you think it didn't work? Yeah. Um, the backstory is kind of interesting. So my uh, wife is a privacy and data protection lawyer. Uh, she works for huge companies and uh, some of the companies that are very much into this. And we've always discussed the privacy rights and how there ne there's never like a tool to do that. So we started with the ambition to build this uh, side of the story. And then uh, we looked at what's going on and how many uh, deletion requests were actually answered. So we realized that in order to finish what we started, we have to deal with this as well. Otherwise, a lot of these requests just fall on, on deaf ears. So I, I mentioned earlier that 82% of the companies are uh, searching manually. Well, 6% of the companies, they're not even searching at all. So they receive those and they're just ignoring. So in order, to close the loop, we need to, to figure this one uh, up as well. I guess we can call this a wrap. And thanks again to Alex thank and you. Data Against Data. You know how to delete your digital footprints.